What? Dude. Okay. I have, I was going to post the episode, but then someone tried to assassinate <laughs> Donald Trump. And here we are. I was like, scrap it. We're re-recording. I don't know what, what this episode's going to be, but I couldn't upload an episode today without talking about what I woke up to. Uh, I went, I did a show last night. And then I got home at like 1 a.m. and I went to bed in the clothes that I performed in. I woke up, checked my phone. I see someone try to blow Donald Trump's head off. And I thought, I need, a, I need to set the camera up now. If there's one thing the world needs, it's an uninformed, spontaneous, straightaway hot take from an Australian comedian. Uh, I'm recording this at uh, 12.30 on Sunday. Yeah, Australian time. So I think uh, it only happened about two hours ago. I, I I didn't I didn't just turn on the camera straight away. I wanted to wait to see what information would come out. Right now, all I know is that Trump was at a rally. A shooter seems to take three shots at him. Uh, missed all three shots. Loser, and then gets taken down by the Secret Service. Now, Donald Trump, say what you like about him. Say what you like about his policies. Say what you like about the type of president you think he was or you think that he will be. The man knows a good photo op when he sees one, okay? Now, every other president who's ever been uh, through an assassination attempt has listened to the Secret Service and, and been whisked away, all right? Someone tries to kill them, they fail. Secret Service jumps on top of them and they go, get down, Mr. President, and then they remove him from the situation immediately. Donald Trump is not that type of guy, all right? He does the bare minimum in terms of his own safety. Security jump on top of him. He stays down. They take out the shooter. They go, all right, Donald Trump, it's time to go. And he says, not without my shoes. I'm not leaving my shoes. I want to put my shoes back on. Firstly, Interesting that Secret Service took his shoes off or they fell off during the the scramble. I don't know how he lost his shoes, but he did. Maybe he was planning to throw his shoes at the shooter. I don't know. But then they're like, get out of here, get out of here. He goes, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. And he looks at the crowd, puts his fist up, blood on his face from his fucked up ear and starts going, fight, fight. Fight. And then this photographer takes the hardest photo ever of, of, of a politician. I'm going to say it right now. I don't think I've seen a cooler photo. I'm not commenting on his politics. I'm not commenting on the situation. I'm saying that someone trying to kill you, you having blood all over your face, and then standing up, putting your fist up in the air and going, fight. Someone takes a photo, the American flag in the background, secret service all around you. That's a fucking sick photo. That's, if I, never in my life have I seen a cooler album cover. That photo just won him the election. Do you think that the, the photographer who took the photo was like a real, like maybe he was a Bernie guy? Like he really wanted Bernie Sanders to win. He takes the he takes the sickest photo that's ever been taken of Donald Trump and any president ever. He looks at it and he goes, dude, unfortunately, this is the greatest photo that I've ever taken and ever will take in my career. But also I know that if I post this online, it's gonna win Donald Trump the election but it will also make me one of the most famous political photographers ever. And I will make so much money from licensing. He's like the guy that invented the nuke. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh fuck. Oh my God, everything's falling apart. He's looking at the, the monumental creative photographic achievement and going, if I release this into the world, it will cause so much it will change the course of history, me releasing this photo. But he had to do it, man. That's history. I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter being like, "How? why would this guy possibly release this photo? Like, even people that hate Trump are like, "What? this photo is so cool that, it's, that, <laughs> that it shouldn't have been released. It's basically what they're saying. How could this photographer dare to release? I don't know. It's history. That's how. You don't, like... I don't think photographers should be asking the question, is this a bad thing to release? It's like, it happened. It's not, it's, you don't know. 
But yeah, to clarify, because I would, I like, obviously it's horrible. It's, it's awful to see political violence like that. That's horrific. Uh, we don't know why the guy did it. I assume he probably disliked the idea of a second term of, <laughs> of President Trump. Um, but at the moment, I don't know anything. All I've seen is like, uh, it looks like it's a appeared to be uh, a white guy, which, you know, all the, uh, all, all the, all the gays and the trans people and the, and the Arab people and anyone who isn't white would have breathed a huge sigh of relief. Like, oh, thank God it wasn't one of ours. <laughs> you know? And then all, all those, all those, all the right wing political pundits are like, bummer, it's one of ours. Fuck, it would have been good headlines. Why couldn't he have been trans? Everyone's doing research now. I mean, come on, please be trans. Please be trans. Everyone on the other side is like, please be white. Please be white. <laughs> but yeah, un undeniably, even if, you, even if you hate Donald Trump, it's undeniable to look at this photo and think that's not, that's not so cool. Like someone's tried to blow your brains out and he stood up and gone, fight! for a photo because he knew that there'd be a sick photo. Like, no way would Joe Biden have the mental acuity <laughs> to, after an assassination attempt, be like, I know what will, this will be good for my campaign. Because that's what people are, people are now, I'm seeing on Twitter, like people are so upset at how cool that photo is that they're now trying to say that the entire political assassination was like set up and faked to help Trump win the election. Could you imagine being in the meeting room where that idea is being pitched? Obviously, it's not fake. But imagine if it was like one staffer is like, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a Call of Duty trick shotter to shoot your ear off and just miss. But we'll get you all bloody so that then you can turn around and put your fist up and take a cool photo. And like, what if, what if he misses? Uh, you'll die. Uh, yeah, all right, let's do it. No way. To me, and I've seen like aerial photos of the of where the rally was. It seems like an abysmal failure by the Secret Service. So I saw this image. It was an aerial photograph. And again, look, this is just super preliminary stuff. So I could be wrong about this. Let's just get that out of the way. But it looks like. The guy that was a shooter, and I've watched an interview of a dude who says he watched the shooter climb on top of a roof with a rifle and he was yelling at the police and saying, look, look over there, look over there. It's like those, uh, like a shed roof. So it's like triangular. So it looks like from the snipers that were on Donald Trump's side would not have been able to see where the shooter was crawling from. But if you look at the aerial photo, like, obviously, if there's going to be a shooter, that is the roof that they would pick. And it's about 400 meters away from Donald Trump. And you climb up the slope, stick your head over, and you can see the whole rally and see Trump and take pot shots at him. Like, it's crazy that that roof wasn't, like, sectioned off or didn't have security on top of it. Because if there was any place that you would take a position at, it obviously would have been that roof because that's where the shooter was. So I don't, it's definitely not faked. No one's faking an assassination attempt with like you can. There's a, there's a photo that someone took where you can see the bullet whiz past Trump. And another thing that I've seen is initially it looked like the the bullet grazed him and hit his ear, but I think they're now saying that what actually happened was the bullet that actually missed Trump by you know. Not a huge amount, but the what happened was it went through a glass teleprompter, which exploded in Trump's face and cut his ear up. And that's why he was bleeding. It wasn't a bullet that grazed him, um, which is just great. Like, thank God he's okay. You know what I mean? Could you imagine the chaos that would have erupted across the country if he was killed? I think that's what's really what what I suppose is really scary about it is it's if he was killed, I think it just would have been, I I think you would have just seen so much more violence everywhere, and I think what's so scary about this as well is 
It's like whenever... Whenever, I reference this a lot, but when I worked in radio, um, when someone famous killed themselves, or if there was a very famous suicide in the, in the news, we, we weren't really allowed to talk about it. And if we did absolutely have to talk about it, we couldn't say things like they're in a better place, or at least the pain is over, or, or anything that would imply like it's an option for people to escape their own pain because it makes it seem possible and it makes it seem like an option and we know that that actually leads to more suicides in the same way that when there's these mass shooting events and school shooters and shit like that putting their name and face in the news and publicizing this stuff makes it more likely for it to occur because it makes it seem so much more fucking possible and concrete like it's something you can actually do so i think that this assassination attempt is just going to flip a switch in so many psychos brains to be like, oh, fuck, I can just go and do that. And so many right-wing psychos are going to be thinking about it. So many left-wing psychos are going to be thinking about it. It's such a scary place where that we're in where it's like, oh, fuck. Someone really almost killed another president. It's happened before and it almost happened again. And it's such a awful thing to happen like yeah we don't want to open the doors to political violence to see what happens because it's going to be very ugly you know people people being like i'm seeing so many people being like oh no like oh no he missed and like they're bummed out that he wasn't killed and it's like dude could like that is fucking worst case scenario like, even people that fucking absolutely hate Trump and think that he will be an incredibly dangerous president, like, you want to defeat him by winning an election. Beating him by having him assassinated is like a nightmare scenario. Could you imagine the fucking violence and chaos that would have erupted, not just at that rally, but fucking everywhere across the country and in other parts of the world if he was killed? Um, I think Joe Biden has come out and said, oh yeah, it's bad and I've seen what's happened and I wish him well, which is good. You know, you don't want, but also that was a tweet. Like, <laughs> I think, I think that the lasting effect of this is, I think it seals the deal. I think Trump wins. I think that in terms of the people that want like a strong leader, like a guy who survives an assassination attempt and doesn't quit and doesn't back down and keeps going and is like, oh, you know, I'm going to fucking win this thing anyway, even if people want me dead. I'm, I'm fighting for America. Like that's the type of person that a lot of people want to lead a country. And when you put him up against a dude that can't string a sentence together way too often, like... I don't know. And especially because now Joe Biden is going to be in a place where he obviously and and rightfully so has to like kind of show a lot of sympathy and empathy for Trump and be like, this is bad. What just happened? I wish him a speedy recovery. We can't have stuff like this. Like he kind of has to give a lot of sympathy and points to his opponent you know and to discourage violence which you know in a lot of people's eyes will just make him look look weak when really what he what he would want to be doing is just talking about how bad Trump is he probably has to tone that down a little bit because this is a guy that just survived an assassination attempt you know it could make Joe Biden look really bad if he comes out and starts saying, yeah, this guy's a fucking horrible person. Like a dude that survives a, an attempt on his life, you can't start dunking on that dude because then it makes it, 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 you know, will make a lot of people look like, oh, you wanted him to be, you know? One thing that I'm seeing so much from so many people that are not American, right? 
So many people are putting tweets out that would get them denied entry to the United States, even if, if Trump lost the election. You know, anyone who wants to have their New York moment or who wants to see the Hollywood sign or wants to, wants to try Texas barbecue, you better start deleting some of those fucking tweets that you're putting out lamenting the fact that Trump survived an assassination. Like, you can't be an advocate for political violence on social media and then gain entry to that country. That's not how tourism works, you know? Like, I don't have very many jokes to tell about this because I would love to immigrate. <laughs> to that beautiful country. So I think that political violence in all forms is wrong and I'm glad that Donald Trump is okay. And I hope that nothing happens to either of the candidates or any politician in America. And, that, and also, I'm not just saying that because I want to get into the States. I'm saying that because you don't want to live in a world where the most powerful country on earth is regularly engaging in political violence. It's not a good thing at all. Um, but yeah, that's... Dude, I watched the video and I just got fucking chills and goosebumps of like, holy fuck. Like I... Like, we just watched the world almost change in an irreparable manner. Like, like we were inches away from the entire fucking globe changing in a way that almost certainly would have been horrific, you know? Although I do like to imagine that like someone woke Joe Biden up. It's like 7 p.m. He's asleep. They woke him up. I'm worried. Why? What? Why are you waking me up? I've, I'm not supposed to be woken up until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Why are you waking me up? And they go, and President Biden, they, am I the president? <laughs> and then they had to give him another two hours to kind of become lucid. They give get a bunch of coffee and stimulants into him. He's like, all right, I've remembered who I am and what my job is. Why did you wake me up? They're like, Donald Trump just survived an assassination attempt. He was shot in the head and he survived. And Joe Biden will be like, oh, so like now cognitively we're kind of on the on the, on the same level. <laughs> now 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 a debate's gonna be like a fair fight between me and him. If he's if he's got a bullet in his brain but he's still alive, maybe I could beat him in an argument for once. <laughs> maybe I'll look smarter on the next debate. No Biden eat. He, it appears to just be glass in his ear. There's, there is no bullet in Donald Trump. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't have much else to say. I think that it's such a good thing that he survived because we don't want to live in a reality where that guy gets killed by, a, you know, a political uh, opponent. No, obviously it's, I don't, I don't think it was fucking organized by, by the Dems or, you know, it would have just been like some lone psycho, but that's still, you know, a political opponent, isn't it? Is just a, a fucking regular guy that disagrees with you so much. They want you dead. I think that's good that he survived. I'm glad that he's okay. I think it's fucking horrible that that happened at all. And I, and, and I think it's a terrible failing on the secret service part like if you look at those photos from the from above the rally and you look at the roofs like i feel like a regular person if you if you were like oh where do you think like a potential assassin would sit at this rally you go oh probably on one of the roofs over there like that seems like a no-brainer so to not have security on the roof that the shooter was on is like uh massive security failure is it not i don't know um and then yeah i think this i think this seals the deal i think he wins the election because i think it it makes trump look so much stronger and i think it it it, it um makes biden look weaker because he has to come out and show empathy for trump and be like whoa whoa turn it back he's not that bad like we shouldn't be trying to kill him you know like i think it just makes 
Biden look weaker because he has to show a lot of empathy for Trump and to kind of tone people's hatred for him down, as he should. That's the right thing to do. Um, but I think that also just kind of, yeah, weakens Biden. Um, and was there anything else that I was thinking? That's kind of it. Yeah. Those are my thoughts based on the, inf on, on the very, very limited information that I woke up to in the last like two hours. Yeah. I just think, I think it's like such a dystopian reality to live in where now both of their rallies, the security in them is going to be crazy. I mean, what does he do now? Does he do, does he do rallies anymore? He, he, he will, but does he do them in the, like the bulletproof box? Like the Pope? Like, are we going to see Trump in the Pope mobile? What are Joe Biden's rallies going to look like? Like, dude, every, I think what's scary about it is from now until the election and probably for the entire term of whoever wins, every single speech people are going to be watching like, is this the one? Like, is this the one where it fucking happens or an, another attempt happens? God forbid. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's it's uh, on a serious note. This is a really horrible thing that's happened. And it's not the world that we want to live in. It's scary that this shit happened at all. Um and yeah, I mean, I guess that's just, yeah, that's just the country that they live in, like where everyone has access to rifles like that. Apparently the shooter had some kind of a rifle. Um, I mean, you would need to if you're 400 meters away and you're taking shots and, and almost hitting, like that's a rifle. Um, I guess that's just the reality of living in a country that has gun rights like that. Like anyone can get a gun and the consequences of that is is any random guy can dream up a scenario where they kill a fucking politician and can attempt it. And that's fucking scary uh, and shouldn't, shouldn't happen. But I guess if they're not going to ban rifles like that, you know, that's, that's the trade-off. You know, if you're a pro guns guy, it's like, all right, well, anyone can have a gun. And that means that anyone can have a gun, including the psychos. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens when they when they release the dude's name and they find out his background and find out why he did it or if he should have been able to buy a gun at all or that that's going to be the next thing is going to be like, the, oh, how the fuck did this guy even get a gun? Was he like a lawful guy up until this point? Was he a dude that should never have been allowed to buy a gun? Yeah, this is going to be crazy. I think what I'm most interested to see is how both candidates do their rallies and what the next debate's going to look like you know the next one's going to be in a fucking bunker underground not live stream so that no one can fucking figure out where it's coming from crazy all right i think that's all i have to say because i don't i don't want to i don't want to make any crazy predictions or anything because i don't want to be one of those people that's just saying shit with limited information but i felt it would be Really weird for me to release a podcast episode where I don't talk about what just happened today. All right? So enjoy the rest of the show. Super long episode of Spearhead Sundays. Um, be safe. Be kind to each other. Don't be advocating for political violence. It's really bad. Uh, and if you're American, you'll get a knock at the door. And if you're not American, you'll never gain entry to that country. Uh, not that those are the reasons why you shouldn't. Like, political violence is bad because you won't get to see Times Square. Like, that's not why it's bad. But also, I feel like a lot of people are making a lot of jokes that when those things get screenshotted and printed at customs when you're trying to get entry into the US will look a lot less funny, you know, 18 months from now. So fucking keep that in mind as well, you know? Anyway, thank God he's okay. God bless America. God bless Donald Trump. And God bless Joe Biden. I want a green card. Can I, whoever wins, I'm voting for whoever's immigration policy is less strict. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the show.
Hey, before we get into it, I've got three Australia shows left. I'm in Warnable on the 19th of July. Then I'm in Shepparton on the 20th of July. That's this weekend. And then uh, we've got episode 350 of the Spirit Sundays podcast live in Melbourne the 26th of July. It's going to be sick. I want to see you there. Then the UK tour starts. We've got London. One show sold out. We added another one. Then we've got Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester. One sold out. We added another one. Uh, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle. Then we go to Scotland. We've got Glasgow. Then we've got Ireland, Belfast, Dublin, all on sale now. Come and see me. That happens in August. I cannot wait. What should I do while I'm there? Also, the Patreon is really growing, and we would love to get you to jump on that. Okay? We're almost at how many members? Uh, it's just loading. Uh, it doesn't say. <laughs> well, we would love for you to, to add w plus one to the unknown number. Enjoy the show. 562. Nice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and Yes! Welcome to episode 345 of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and okay, something very funny is happening uh, probably tomorrow. No details, not going into it, but <laughs> it's, it's happening, and it's going to be really good. I don't know how much I'll be able to say during the happening, the great happening, but just know... That we've we've done it again, and it might be my greatest uh, undercover operation yet. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm saying. All right, in, in, and enjoy it. It's going to be good. Is that too much that I've said? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we can censor some word there. No, you know what? Yolo. It's too late now. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's all, guys. Sketch, one of the biggest streamers that's blown up over the last few years has been exposed sketch has been exposed he's had his secret big secret has been revealed and it's so bad that everyone has been expecting this man to have his career destroyed over it what is his big secret he's gay huh? oh no Sketch, if you don't know, he's a giant YouTuber who, uh, you may know him from TikTok clips, he wears glasses, he's blown up everywhere. He's not a YouTuber, sorry, he's a streamer. Uh, his catchphrase is, what's up, brother? Uh, that's his more recent catchphrase. His other one is, uh, is uh, something that I can't repeat. But he's blown up super huge over the last few years, and he's kind of like the white speed. Um, and clips of him have recently come out from an old OnlyFans account that he had from before his streaming career that when I first heard, oh, okay, sketch OnlyFans, I was like, oh, okay, the dude was just posting dick pics, the guy was maybe doing some sexy dancing, some posing. Tell me why when I searched sketch on Twitter, I saw him getting Eiffel Towered by two black guys. Oh, actually? Uh, for real, wearing lingerie. What's wrong with that? No, no, you homophobe? No, I... What's wrong with gay love, Keelan? No. What's wrong with watching your favourite streamer getting DP'd by two black guys on OnlyFans wearing lingerie? I don't want to see him getting DP'd. Who would you rather see getting DP'd if you had to pick a streamer? Um, Aiden Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I would Ludwig. pick... Actually, Ludwig. Ludwig would be... That, yeah. that is funny. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see him do the Luddy on, on, a, couple of, <laughs> on a couple of boys from the hood. Yeah. Um, dude, search, search Sketch on Twitter. I don't have X. You, need, a, you need an account. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? This is horrible that this is even out there at all, and I don't, and I don't approve um, of, like, putting people's business out there like that. But also, I guess it was out there, so it's kind of public. It's it's not it's not exactly it's not necessarily revenge porn or like leaking nudes unconsensually. It's this weird gray area where the guy used to be a gay porn star. Well, maybe not a star because I don't think it was very successful. Mm. But uh, he, yeah, it's. But that's awful. interesting because what are the the <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's, and it's and it's his face. It's undeniably him, and it's wearing lingerie, and it's like full on fucking, like it is. It is 
the most dictionary definition of gay porn you've ever, you've ever seen in your life. And I feel so sorry for the guy because he's blown up and he's just been this. And you know what's even worse is he's become huge in, like, the American sports and the African-American sphere. Two communities that have big problems with homophobia, right? So to the point where all of this came out, it went mega viral, of course. And then all of these other big streamers and big sports fans are coming out and being like, oh, how could I possibly support Sketch now? This is disgusting. How could I support him? And I was thinking, oh, my God, what has he done? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, hey, who among us hasn't been Eiffel Towered by two black porn stars while, you know, to fund our drug habit, all right? Who are, like, let he who has not put on green lingerie and sucked a dick for meth money <laughs> throw the first stone, all right? We've all done it. We've all been there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rough. And he's come out. I feel so sorry for the dude, right? He's come out and he's apologised. He's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, what are you sorry for? Like, are you sorry? And all these other people are like, hey, yeah, that's right. You better apologise for being gay. Or is he apologising for having a secret porno account? Which I guess... Who cares? Look, it's a... I don't know. It's a tough one. It's a little bit relevant because he has so many child fans. But then also, so does every other fucking streamer with an OnlyFans as well. I just think it's like this... this what is, I suppose, concerning about... Not the sketch situation, just the internet in general, is that there is such a blurring of lines of what a porn star is anymore, right? Because before you would have your adult entertainers, now it's it's like meshed so much where fucking 50%, it seems, of every popular lady streamer has an OnlyFans where they do anything from like just racy underwear pics to full-on pornography. And then, you know, every influencer even if they don't personally create porn, is interviewing porn stars. And I've done this as well because I'm fascinated by the adult industry and I don't look down upon it. But it is getting to a point where it's like, oh, man, if the entertainment that adults are watching is exactly the same as what children are watching on social media and it's so interlinked with porn and porn stars and porn creators, how the fuck are we supposed to protect children from being exposed to porn it's like it's like if every single fucking event you went to sold alcohol and it and it didn't really check ids and you could go to the you could go to the circus and, and people would just be hot handing out vodka cruises to anyone who asked and they wouldn't check for i don't know but again we also have that Every single event we go to talks about alcohol and alcohol's present and that has an effect on children's minds, even if they're not drinking it. So maybe it's the same thing. But what I do think is fucking insane is the fact that this guy has to apologise <laughs> for being gay. How could you trick me? How could you lie? All these people are going, how dare this guy lie about his gay past? And it's like, not coming out of the closet isn't lying. Especially when you are forced out of the closet by people leaking fucking intimate videos of you. And then the reaction is, how could you do this? It's like, why the fuck would he tell anyone that he's gay if this is how you've reacted when you found out? It's like, I can't believe this guy didn't tell me that he was gay so that I could be homophobic to him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's why they don't... That's why there hasn't been a single gay AFL player in Australia. Is that still a thing? Current uh, player. We don't have one. We th everyone, World's straightest sport. Everyone thinks Darcy Moore, the captain of Collingwood, is gay. Why is that? Uh, Did they find his old OnlyFans account? I'll show you what he looks like. Oh, right. Does he, does he look quite queer? Yes. I'll show you. But if you look at But up, you know what though, that doesn't mean anything because if I was to look at a picture of sketch, I would never never in my life would I think that bloke likes likes France. The monuments of France. 
He just looks like a guy with a mullet. That doesn't. He doesn't look like a gay dude. If you talk to any guy who plays footy in a club, like a local club, mm. they all reckon he's gay. Mm. It's news. Interesting. Look, I think it's, it's. I don't know. It's it's also particularly bad because after it, after it came out, right again against his will, it comes out. It goes mega viral. All of these clips are everywhere on Twitch, which by the on Twitter, which by the way, no one's paying for. Okay, so you know, pay up. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send sketch ten dollars because I've watched a few of them. It was like a. It was like a, a. Is it homophobic to find those videos fucking disgusting? No, I don't think so, because if I didn't find them fucking disgusting, I might be a little bit gay. I have this argument with with uh, people in my life all the time, where I think gay love is beautiful, but I think gay sex is disgusting, and that's and and not not that. <laughs> look, okay, let me clarify. I think that when I, when I'm when I think of two gay men having sex, I'm not like yuck, that's wrong. I don't think that at all. But if I see them doing it, I'll go, Ugh. In the same way that I would imagine a gay person would react if they saw straight people having sex. Like, gay people don't see straight people holding hands and go, Ugh, and they don't think, oh, straight people have sex. They don't go, Ugh. But if they were to see straight people fucking in front of them, they'd probably go, Ugh. So what's the argument is that people in your life think that it is homophobic? So, so, so I've had this argument where, where if, like, if you showed me gay porn, I'd be like, ah! Whereas, and that's homophobic. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. That's me being a straight. <laughs> you know, that's me having a, a sexual, uh, what's the opposite of a sexual preference? A sexual dis... No. <laughs> I feel like can you feel can you feel me walking on a tightrope here? I'm trying to I'm trying to show support to all of my all of my LGBT listeners, of which there are dozens. There's mostly lesbian women uh, that listen to this show. <laughs> now that I don't find disgusting, but that's because it's double straight for me as a viewer. <laughs> for you, it's gay. For me, I'm like sweet, and that proves that it's not homophobic. Maybe it's maybe it's misandry. Maybe I just hate men. Maybe that's the real. Anyway, guys, I don't think that Sketch should be apologizing for being queer. He comes out and he goes, "I'm so sorry." Although, fuck, he's very very funny. I was actually so his apology really made me laugh and then really made me sad because he had to do it at all. Um, but there is a bit from it that I that I cut up that is just. So funny. All right, this is his apology. Elephant in the room, I got a haircut. I did not have sexual relations with that man. I'm just kidding. I did, possibly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's it's such a it is a very scummy thing to be going and and, and leaking uh, like OnlyFans videos in general, even if they are currently a, a star, because that's something that you want to keep behind a pay paywall and all that kind of stuff. It's copyright infringement, and that is the the worst of the worst actions you can possibly commit. All right, that's up there with going into a cinema with a video camera and filming the screen. You fucking animal, disgusting. You should be hung. Um, from the Eiffel Tower, the one in France, not the one that I'm seeing on Twitter. Um, yeah, look, I, I just think it's it sucks, because, especially because the guy, like, I mean, from what um, his friends that were with him in real life at the time said, it gets leaked, it goes nuts on Twitter, and then he just immediately runs away to kill himself, right? And then he has to, they, you know, they convince him to come back in and they, they look after him and he seems to be all right now. And I think that's the that's the repercussions of leaking sexually explicit stuff against people's will um, and also outing people as gay or trans or whatever before they're ready to come out themselves is uh, a lot of the time it's just fucking suicide. 
And that's because we live in this society where people uh, see gay sex and they go, yuck, which is which it would be fine if you saw gay love and said, that's beautiful. <laughs> like me, an ally. Yeah. But if you <laughs> if you see if you see gay gay love and you go, yuck, but then you see gay sex and you go, damn, that's like your average pastor in a church who's been cured of being gay. You know, that's like the opposite, isn't it? I'm like, I'm the opposite of, of a former gay. I see gay love and I, and, I, and I think it's beautiful and I see gay sex and I think yuck. <laughs> and, and, and one I do in public and the other one I do in private. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Look, I, I'm definitely not saying that every couple of weeks I chuck on a gay porno just to check. <laughs> I don't do that. What I'm saying is every now and then a, a very famous Twitch streamer will get Eiffel Towered and it, and it gets flashbanged into me while I'm scrolling through Twitter. Oh, Eiffel Towered is so disgusting. It's, it, it's like, yeah, from, like everyone's seen the, the, the tweets about it without the video and without the photos is like, oh, yeah, he's probably just posting a few pickies <laughs> for homosexual men to enjoy. And then you, and then you <laughs> see what was actually posting. You're like, whoa! That man's a fucking cowboy. Because he knows how to write. Anyway, look, I think I stand with Sketch. Because <laughs> he knows how to write. Yeah. I just, how does he, you know, what is this is what's so fucked about being a live streamer is now, and he's also an outside live streamer too. Like he does real life stuff all the time. Now, everyone's going to run up to him and just scream, just like referencing him fucking, like, remember, you know, the, the portal that they put in New York? And was it Dublin, the other end of it, of it is? New York and Dublin? You know how everyone in Dublin thought it was really funny to flash, like, images of 9-11 on the camera? People are going to start doing that with, with sketches, OnlyFans porn, during his live streams, running up to him with a phone and being like... And I guess it's going to... Like, the fallout for it, business-wise as well, is... Um, he's going to lose so many endorsements and shit like that. Because I think that seem, that does seem to be the rule, is that you can have an OnlyFans and get endorsements, but only if you're not doing, like, actual porn. That kind of seems to be where the industry of streaming and influencers has landed, and also kind of only if you're a woman, but there hasn't been very many men with OnlyFans, and certainly this guy's the first one who's, like, full-on fucking. So... Yeah, I guess he's going to lose all of his big sponsorships and stuff like that, which, you know, is probably fair enough because you can't have porn stars be the face of your brand, even if they are ex-porn stars. That's goes That goes back to the thing of, like, entertainment and porn kind of melding and, and becoming one, which it always kind of has been, you know? Like, you look at every single rap clip and it's basically softcore pornography. Every single pop star is dancing in the nude and shit like that. And every single song is about sex. So it's not necessarily a new problem in any way. Like, every single pop song for the last hundred years is about fucking. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Like, that's just about sucking cock. I was, I was singing that when I was, like, fucking 12. Mm. <laughs> then you blow my whistle baby whistle baby and, and you know I thought man when I grow up I'm going to see a lot of whistle blowing and uh, no adults really have whistles but it turns out a lot of adults are out there sucking cock like the only adult whistleblower <laughs> I know is Julian Assange and I don't think that song was written about him mm. <laughs> anyway guys um <laughs> I've got my UK tour coming up, and that's in Europe, which is quite close to France, which for some reason I feel I feel like I would like to visit. <laughs> because 
Look. Mm. Mr. Beast wants to be president. <laughs> God. Mr. Beast wanting to be president is the most nine-year-old brain shit ever. You know, he put, he, all these people are going, Americans are so funny where they're just like, oh, anyone who's rich should be president. It's like, that, well, that's how you guys got Donald Trump. <laughs> I think that, I think that the, the worst thing about Donald Trump becoming president is showing that it can be done. Like a politician, it showed not just every person, but it also showed every voter that you can actually vote for someone who's never been a politician and it might work. That's going to be the eternal repercussion for America of Donald Trump getting voted in. It's like, forget about his any any of his policies and shit like that. All right, even if even if he even if he destroys the country, what will be even worse than that is that in the aftermath there'll be guys like Mr. Beast who's like, I, I want to give it a go. Like it really is a popularity contest. I think that's what they exposed, which it always has been. But that's what Trump has exposed is that the voting system is just a popularity contest and that will lead very popular people to start running. Kanye, if he was more mentally stable, he might have been able to do it and actually run. He might have gotten somewhere. But, it, but Mr. Beast has now come out and said, when I'm old enough, when I grow up, I'm going to be the president. <laughs> and all these people are going, this is such a good idea. Now, do you really think that Mr. Beast would be a good president. I spent $100 billion on missiles and sent them to every Middle Eastern country. That would be the video. Is he would, is he, I don't think Mr. Beast could be president and not be a YouTuber. I think he would try to do both. And that'd be kind of cool though, like daily vlogging as the president. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna decide whether or not women should be allowed to vote. <laughs> retention editing the presidency yeah that would be good yeah that would that would be great and later on in this video we're gonna find out if syria will get access to clean drinking water like the video if you want them to survive the famine that would be fucking that would be great like his all and all of his all of his social housing you know policies will be like the feastable bill <laughs> We're going to put a feastable in every single school lunch. Vote for Mr. Beast. I'm giving away $1,000 for one person who assassinates my political opponent. <laughs> that would be good. He put out this tweet. He goes, if we lower the age to run for president, I'll jump in the race. All right? And then people say, what would your policies be? And Mr. Beast said, if I were president, I wouldn't care about party lines. <laughs> I would just always truly make the American people my number one priority. For problems that I'm ignorant in, I would have experts. <laughs> if I'm president, I would be a really good president. For problems that I'm ignorant in, I would have experts from the left and right advise me on them and try to find the middle ground that's best for America. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to decide if um, women should be allowed to have uh, abortions. What do you think? I think they should. What do you think? I think they shouldn't. Hmm. <laughs> what would the middle ground be on this? Maybe. How about this? All women will be allowed to undergo abortion procedures, but 50% of them will be placebos. <laughs> So you go in and you get an abortion and then you have to wait a few months to see if it takes. And that's the middle ground on whether or not women should be allowed to have abortions. Um, that just reminds me of like when I was 17, all my friends were like, had like real, really like far right. You were in policies. America. Yeah, yeah, really far right policies. But they were like, but you know, I like to keep a middle ground and hear what the other side have to say. Yeah. It's like, you do, all you do is look at Instagram. <laughs> um... I would try to find the middle ground that's best for America. I would not be viable. I don't care about doing things just because my party says I should. Yes, you have to! <laughs> like, this guy's describing a dictatorship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I got voted in, I would ask one guy from the right wing what I should do, one guy from the left wing what I should do, and then I'll just 
disregard everyone else and no matter what anyone says, I'll make those decisions. Like, that's just unfortunately as broken as the fucking democratic system is. It's not how it works. The only way to do that is to become a dictator, which I would love. I would love, like, the Mr. Beast Caliphate to really come uh, across and, and sweep the Western world. That would be, that'd be great. Like, subscribe or cut off your left hand. I reckon that'd be good. Um, I wouldn't be viable. I don't care about doing things just because my party says I should. And I would focus on uniting the country instead of dividing it. The most nothing sentence ever. Anyways, we can pick up this in 15 years when I'm old enough to run. Ha ha. Um, he could run in nine years. He got the math wrong. And that's who the president should be, Mr. Beast. A guy who runs a big YouTube channel should run the greatest Western power in the world for now until China takes over. I think, I do love, I love that, you know what, that's the type of delusional confidence that gets you to be the, the biggest YouTuber in the world. Is like, I reckon I could just do it. And then he does. You know what, I'll be, I bet I'll be eating my words. Like, like in, in 15 years, I'm going to go to America and, and everything's just going to, it's going to be a utopia, you know? There's, there won't be anyone shitting on the streets. Instead of poo on the ground, there'll just be big piles of melted feastables. <laughs> it's, there, there won't be, like, there won't be heroin addicts on the street anymore. Like, no one's going to be slumped over on fentanyl. Everyone will be hunched over watching Mr. Beast shorts. <laughs> That's that'll be the that'll be the addiction that sweeps the nation. Like you know you know how um, <clears throat> back in like the 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 sixties seventies and eighties they flooded black communities with crack cocaine. Mm. They're gonna they're gonna flood um, schools with just retention edited YouTube shorts <laughs> by Mr. Beast, and and every kid is uh, is from marginalized communities. Is just going to be watching Mr. Beast YouTube shorts instead of learning anything. That's so funny. Oh, we, so we've got a we've got a sweeping fentanyl epidemic. What do you think we should do, right, we go? I think we should kill every drug addict. I think we should kill them and and lock them in prison. <laughs> Very interesting. What do you think, uh, left wing expert? I think we should we should open the borders and let them do heroin in the, and fentanyl in the street. And uh, if anyone tries to move them on, and then that drug addict stabs them, we should uh, we should just give this the drug addict the talking to and let them free. Interesting. I think the middle ground here is um, giving them an iPad that's subscribed to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I like that. The mis and who do you reckon would be in Mr. Beast's cabinet? We would have, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously we would have um, uh, Ava would be head of um, tre the, the women's rights. The, the, the minister for women would be Ava. Oh, Chris. <laughs> you would get executed for that. <laughs> no, just... You would get executed for that. I thought their name. Don't name her. I thought their name was still Chris. I think, I think that um, when... it was Chris with a K. Yeah. It went because it went it went from uh, Chris spelled a different way, but I wouldn't say because I would dead name. But now it's Chris with a K. Uh, but now I think it's Ava. Okay. All right. Ava Tyson. Ava Tyson, why do um why do trans people pick yep. names that Ava. that sound like cleaning products a lot? <laughs> Have you noticed that that a lot of the time they they just pick names that are like cleaning products, like a really like a, a really common one for like um, non-binary people or or, or uh, female to male trans people is Kai, and Kai sounds like a like a I don't know like a type of Soap that I would find underneath my kitchen sink. Yeah, that's clean it with Kai. Mm. And then Ava, Ava gives off dishwashing powder. Don't you think? Like I feel like if I put Ava in my dishwasher, I come up with sparkling clean dishes, which is probably good because, as we all know, <laughs> women are very good at cleaning. Um, so we've got Ava as the minister for women. Uh, if Mr. Beast is the president, who do we have? 
as the uh, in charge of the military, who are we putting in charge of the military? I think we bring back one of the old Mr. Beast friends. Like, who's that Who's that uh, Viking Jake with the beard yeah. who hates trans people? You put him in charge of the military because because he looks like he would love to kill someone. Jake the Viking. Jake the Viking is in charge of the military. But I think then his liberal counterpart would be uh, Sam Piker. This is perfect. So that's this is great. So when Mr. Beast is in office and he has to make a decision, right, he, the, the, the decision is, um, should, should we allow religion in schools? And his left-wing expert is Hassan Piker, and his right-wing expert is, um, who's the right-wing expert? We'll have, um, fuck, who am I thinking of? Ben Shapiro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all of the experts are just political YouTubers. Hassan Piker, Ben Shapiro, should we allow religion in school? And they don't even give an opinion. They just start fighting each other. I would, I, I really want Mr. Beast to be president. I just because I would, I want to hear his, him try to make a statement on Israel and Palestine. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I like love you, Mr. Beast. Love your philanthropy work, but if you haven't said a single political opinion at all, <laughs> you can't really be the president. That would be good. I, you know what he, I think what he would do is I think he would, he would slash the military budget and put it all into videos. Because at some point, that is what has to happen for him to make better videos, is we're going to have to start carving some money out from the military budget. You know, he's going to be like, why do we have a base in Australia? Like, that could be like a cool challenge video. Like, if you took $100 billion away from the military budget and you put it into a, a one YouTube video, you could solve homelessness. You could be like, I gathered every single homeless person into a cube, and if they can't escape, they'll starve to death. And then, like, by the end of the video, only one cube actually had an exit, all of the other homeless people starved to death. And then he gets out and he gets a feastable bar in a house and Mr. Beast goes, I've solved the homelessness problem. Hassan Pike is going, no, you can't do that. And then Mr. Beast goes, sorry, Ben Shapiro won the coin toss. Uh, I put a hundred strangers in Pine Gap first to leave lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That is good, yeah. Um, you, could, you could be like, uh, I gathered a hundred YouTubers uh, in Columbine and, <laughs> and, and sent in a shooter. That's a video. Who would be in charge of the CIA? Because you would, you would need to have, like, a clandestine operation. I know, you would have... Um, who's that guy that copies all of Mr. Beam's videos? Mi oh, Mr. Beam. Yeah, oh, Matthew Beam. Matthew Beam. <laughs> Matthew Beam is the head of the CIA, and every now and then he tries to assassinate Mr. Beast <laughs> to replace him. So that he can control the country? Look, one thing's for sure, he would do a better job than Joe Biden, who's barely awake. Maybe Ninja could be at, um, in charge of like... Minister for Gaming. <laughs> That's, you would have, you would, if Mr. Beast was president, you would just have like a bunch of new ministers pop up. You'd have Minister for Gaming, uh, the head of the vlogging department, you would have uh, minister minister for get ready with me, and and every day they they do like a, a just a get ready with me vlog with Mr Beast, and then Chandler could be like minister for sanitation. Yeah, because he started as a janitor. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> this is this is great. I feel like we're I, you know I started off going look I don't think that Mr Beast would make a great president, but I actually have completely turned around on this as long as Mr Beast has the right people around him. Hassan Piger and Ben Shapiro, I think that he'd be able to unite the nation. Um, you could uh, you could put Sketch in charge of uh, the LGBT community. The the one thing with Sketch that the the only criticism I have, all right, is <clears throat> does this mean that Sketch was pretending to be gay for OnlyFans? Or is he pretending to be autistic for Twitch? 
Because you can only be angry at one of those things. Because all I'm saying is, not once during that Eiffel Tower video did he go, what's up, brother? Maybe that is how President Beast solves the national drug crisis. You take every single fentanyl addict and you just put them in, in front of a camera and you start blowing them up on Twitch. And you view bot all of their accounts and then if you turn every crackhead into like a famous Twitch streamer, they never go back to drugs, evidently. All right, I think we've milked this Mr. President Beast bit dry. Could uh, get PewDiePie for international relations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Miss, yeah. PewDiePie is like the ambassador for the states living in Japan. That would be good. Oh my god. I I would just I just would love to see. This is this is my thing. It's the same thing with Trump. Don't I don't know if he should be president, but we should absolutely let him campaign forever. <laughs> That's where I am with with Trump. People are like, oh, why do you hate Trump? I don't hate Trump. I just think when he's president, it's boring. I think that he should always be campaigning and he should never win. Because how boring would the presidential race be if it was Joe Biden and just like some guy in a red tie? That sucks. They probably wouldn't bring up the fact that Joe Biden can't stay awake. They would stay respectful, boring. I want to see Mr. Beast campaigning against Trump. That would be exciting. This guy's not a businessman. He doesn't know how to profit. All he knows is how to spend heaps of money on a YouTube video. Donald Trump gets no views. I get more views on Twitter than Donald Trump. All right, guys, that's that's probably it. Um, so, the UK tour is coming up, and this is a question to you guys. How long have we been going here? 35 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to be in the UK for, it's looking like at least six weeks. I, le I leave August 5, and I get back, well, the last show is the 31st. I haven't booked my return flight yet. Um, what I'm thinking is, where am I going to do the podcast? Because I'm staying in shitholes. Like, I'm staying in hostels with single rooms. My only criteria for a hotel room, because I want to keep it cheap, because I think that's more exciting for my first one, uh, is I don't want to get robbed. So I've got single rooms, shared bathrooms everywhere that I'm going. So I probably won't be able to record podcasts in the hotel rooms. So I'm thinking, what's, what's, what are we doing with the podcast? Because I also won't be with Keelan because we'll be in different time zones. I'm thinking that I could just do one walking around, but I am conscious of getting robbed as well. That seems to be a thing. I, I don't think it's as real as you're hearing about it. Yeah, I'm just watching fear-mongering shit on TikTok. Yeah, I, I travelled around with my computer and camera. I, I never felt like I was going to get robbed. Only in Birmingham did I feel unsafe. Mm, interesting. Um, so yeah, what should I be doing with podcasts? Also, uh, what podcasts should I do when I'm in the UK? I'm going to start reaching out to other, uh, YouTubers and comedians in the UK. And, uh, I don't, I don't really know any, I don't know any podcasts. Um, maybe I can do the e-boys. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> although I think that's ended. Um, <clears throat> All right. Why is that? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that. <laughs> um, wow, what else do I have here? Oh, the miscellaneous bit. What's your weekend look like? This weekend? Mm, next weekend. Next weekend? Oh, no, actually, the weekend after. The weekend after? Yeah. Oh, we've got the live podcast. Episode three hundred and fifty <laughs> is coming up. It's going to be awesome. We've got some. We've got. Uh, we've got something great planned for this episode. It's going to be great fun. We, we haven't done a live podcast for like a hundred episodes. Yeah, or more. Two, uh, was it two hundred and fifty? Two hundred and fifty was the in last Tassie. in Tassie. Fuck. But was that in front of an audience? 
Well, that was just just you and I. That was just a live stream. Yeah, we have, when's the last live show? It must have been 200. One f- 150? No way. We haven't done a live show. And that's probably right because that would have been before COVID. It was uh, February 19, uh, 17. Whatever. What? Yeah. February 17, 2019. Wow. This is the first live episode in five years and we're doing it in Melbourne in two weeks. Loosebeers.com, the tickets are on the website. And they're going quick. 150, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm even more excited for this. And we're we're actually gonna we're gonna do it properly too. Cause all, cause back then was when we were just figuring shit out with duct tape and a dream. Now we don't have a budget for more than duct tape, but we do know what we're doing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um so yeah, it's gonna be fun. Keelan's gonna be there. Uh, and we've we've also a lot of people have been asking about Code Keelan, because it is uh a discount that has been running for all of the tickets and uh, on on this tour where if you input code Keelan, you get some money off. Now, a lot of people who are buying tickets to the live podcast have been asking where they can put in code Keelan to get a dollar off the ticket. We can't do discount codes for this because we can't... Uh, we're not selling the tickets ourselves. It's going through a different ticket seller because of the contract with the venue. It's out of our hands. So what we're going to do is on the night at the venue, if you say code Keelan to Keelan, he will give you a dollar in real life. Mm -hmm. A dollar coin. That's how we're going to do it. All right. Use code Keelan in person at the event for a dollar after the event has happened. That's, how we're going to do code Keelan is if you say Keelan to Keelan at the show, you'll get a dollar back on your tickets. <laughs> so there we go. A lot of people asking, well, how do I put in code Keelan in person after the event <laughs> manually, verbally? And if you don't say it to him, you don't get your dollar. That's how it works. Use code Keelan at the venue after the show. And you can only use it once, only and, valid once. Yeah, and Keelan is great at remembering faces. So. <laughs> Jeez, before the event, you're going to be jingling like a fucking pot of <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have to go to the bank and ask for 100 one dollar coins. <laughs> That's really good. It sounds like, sounds like the start of like a, a terrible Mr. Beast video. <laughs> President Beast, sorry. <clears throat> All right, dude, I can't. I'm so excited for next week. And I, I wonder what people are going to say. I can't. I won't. I will be suspiciously silent, but just know it's, it's part of the process, baby. I've said too much. We'll leave it in. YOLO. All right. Um, I've got an email here from, uh, from a listener. If you want to send an email uh, to the show, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. That's L-E-W Spears. Uh, if you need some life advice, if you have a story for me, if you want me to talk about something, you want my opinion on something, email the show, uh, podcast at loosespears.com. Where is it? Where is it here? Okay. Uh, high school friend's relationship has broken up and it's getting really awkward. Hey, Lou, love the podcast. Thanks, buddy. I have an issue, and I'm just trying to find out what to do here. My high school friends, who've been dating since 14, we are now 22, uh, and as far as I was aware, we're planning to marry and be together forever. Unbeknownst to me and all the other guys in the group, they had broken up about 10 months ago now. They didn't tell anyone for 10 months? That's interesting. All the girls had already figured this out. Lol when she had moved out of his house and in with a couple of the other girls in the group. Dude, is this guy your friend? What do you mean he was with, from 14 to 22, this guy was dating someone who you were also friends with and you didn't figure it out for 10 months that they'd broken up? Are you guys friends or did you just go to school together and you never speak? What the fuck are you talking about? Either you're a bad friend or this guy's weird as fuck, like he's keeping it a secret. You might be the most unobservant motherfucker on earth. <laughs> like, what's the bet that everyone else in the friendship group knew about this except for this one autistic guy who listens to my podcast? From what I have heard, he's been quite a horrible boyfriend. 
requiring her to ask before going out with friends, taking days off work, or even just spending time alone. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, is this someone you want to be friends with? On one occasion, she had planned to take a day off with a couple of friends at work and hang out. This sent him off, and as a result, he took off the day so that she would have to hang out with him. I guess this was his plan. Yeah, sounds like very controlling. As well as lots of other things that were quite controlling. Yeah, okay, this is good that you've... I, I didn't work out that they'd broken up for 10 months, but I have worked out that he was maybe abusive. Anyway, good friend of mine. So obviously, it wasn't a good environment, and she hasn't been happy for a long time. Her plan is to move somewhere in Australia with her brother sometime in the next few months. He's claiming that this is a shock to him, and he's caught completely off guard, and almost refuses to break up with her. Huh? Thought they broke up 10 months ago. Every time we hang out, he asks her if she wants to hang out or what she's doing after as if they are still dating. And it is so awkward to watch because she's made it pretty clear to him that this is over and it's really easy to see when they are together too. But because we're in the same friend group, she has to put up with this for the next few months. Uh, none of us have spoken to him about this issue, and I guess my question is, how can we or I talk to this guy and get it through to him that he needs to move on? I feel really bad for her having to put up with his, put up with this, because she's clearly lost feelings for him and wants to let go, let go. I also worry for him because he's always been a corner guy with no intentions of talking or meeting anyone new and is clearly in a bad state right now. We've all been told not to talk about it in front of him for whatever reason, but I feel like this dude kind of needs a wake-up call because it's getting kind of pathetic. Thanks, Lewis. Love the podcast. Come to New Zealand. Yeah, you need to uh, give this guy a stern talking to about his behaviour with this girl, uh, and if he doesn't get it, you need to eject him from the friendship group because this is uh, controlling uh, and sounds like it was abusive in the relationship and now he's trying to control her even though they're not in a relationship and you know what happens when uh girls are around these dudes and then they move on the dudes flip out and it's your responsibility as a man to talk to your friend and tell him that his behavior is unacceptable if they've broken up and he hasn't gotten over it and he won't let her do things and he's still being controlling you need to go hey man you're being a fucking psychopath stop it's not cool. And this is, I totally understand this. Like, as men, it's very difficult to know what to do when a man that you're friends with is exhibiting this type of behavior with women. It's very difficult to know what to do, especially when you're young. But the only thing to do is to fucking tell your friend that what they're doing is unacceptable. It's not acceptable to be taking days off work to stop your fucking girlfriend from hanging out with her friends and having fun and living her life and being a normal human being. Like, that, even when they're in a relationship, is fucking crazy controlling and weird as fuck. But then to be trying to do that to a woman that you're not even in a relationship with, that's stalking. Um, <clears throat> yeah, dude, you can't allow your male friend to treat women like that either in your presence or at all. Uh, and it's something that you absolutely need to talk about. Like, what's what's better? Uh, what's what's more awkward, all right? Having, having a weird conversation with your friend or uh, dealing with the repercussions of your other friend having a fucking black eye and knowing that you did nothing. Now, I'm not saying that your friend is going to turn into an, a physically abusive person like that, but that is how all of this shit starts and it absolutely is a story that I've heard and seen many times before of group of male friends see their their male friends uh, dangerous, objectionable, questionable behaviour but oh, no violence has occurred so not really sure maybe he's just a bad boyfriend it's like what you're and you're young so I don't really fault you for this but what you're witnessing is like the first steps of controlling abusive behavior. Like, this is it. And this is only the stuff that you're aware of. Who knows how much worse it is. Yeah. And also, sounds like you're not friends with this guy at all, hey? Like, I don't know. Either you guys don't actually talk at all, so you didn't know that they broke up, 
Or he actually kept that a secret from you. Like they broke up, the girl told her friends, and he kept it a secret from you, which again is like a controlling maneuver of like, if I break up with my girlfriend and I don't tell any of my friends, and in fact I kind of play it off like we are still together, and then all of my all of my friends who I know she interacts with think we're still together, that's gonna make her feel like shit and gonna make her feel fucking weird, which might make bring her back to me and keep her trapped in this abusive relationship. Like that's what this dude seems to be doing. Like any man who refuses to accept the reality that they are no longer with a woman, that's like fucking creep, weird, abusive behavior. If a woman leaves a man and he refuses to accept it, you've got yourself a big problem in your friendship group. And that's your responsibility as a man to talk to this guy, give him the opportunity to see the reality to see his mistakes and learn from it. And if he can't do that, you've got to exile him. A lot of people go, oh, exile this person. Unless they've, you know, fully fucking committed horrible heinous acts. I don't believe in that because then it just kind of makes dangerous person someone else's problem. Especially when you're like a young dude and this is his first ever relationship as well, sounds like. It's your responsibility to talk to this person. You've obviously seen red flags and you're obviously very aware of this dude's creepy, weird fucking behavior. So now it's up to you to talk to this guy and uh, give him the opportunity to stop and improve. Um, if he doesn't, you just gotta exile him. And if that makes it awkward for your other male friends, then they're all fucking garbage and you shouldn't be friends with them either because that's something that like I fully understand as a man especially after seeing violence and shit in my life and seeing the repercussions of that uh if you uh just tolerate that behavior from people that are within your influence you're contributing to the problem a good man is not someone who, who uh is the absence of harm. Like if you're not going out and hurting people, that doesn't mean you're a good person. You're a neutral person. You're, you're doing nothing. You're not evil, but you're not, you're not a good person. It's very easy to feel like a good person because you look at yourself and you're like, well, I've never fucking slapped a woman in the face. But if you have people in your circle, uh, that, you know, have real problematic interactions with women and you tolerate it or ignore it, or you don't confront it, um, you're enabling it because I think the reality of this type of stuff is like, you know, so much abusive behavior that, uh, men and also women do, uh, will never ever be like, uh, followed up or, or, um, by the law. Like so much of it is just like smoke and mirrors and he said, she said, and, and, and not like on paper, a crime, uh, shit like, you know, controlling her her movements using extreme emotional pressure and guilt tripping. It's not abuse that would get you arrested, but it's unbelievably problematic behavior that almost always escalates as time goes on and turns into the type of stuff that gets people arrested for. So when you have a person that is not committing on paper illegal acts that you could call the police about, but they are doing shit that is like emotionally abusive and really problematic and like very controlling. The only repercussions that those men and women can experience are social repercussions. And that is your responsibility. Uh, because if you don't, you know, show them those consequences, if you tolerate it, you're sending big signals to these people that it's totally fine and they're actually right. And their girlfriend isn't allowed to leave the fucking house and have fun and have friends, you know? Um, yeah, that's what I think, is it's your responsibility to talk to this guy and give him the fucking hard reality of like, hey, dude, like, I don't know, what would I say? I would say, hey, man, um, I've just, I wanted to talk to you about you and your ex-partner. It seems like you're not willing to move on uh, or let her move on. What's up with that? 
and then just shut up and let them speak and you're 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 in the conversation um yeah it's a really difficult and it's a really hard thing to do to confront this type of stuff um but you as a man it's your responsibility because if you don't it gets worse 100 percent of the time it always gets worse might not be with this girl but it might be with his next partner you know and it always gets worse and the only way to, to stop it is to have those really uncomfortable conversations with your friends when they start exhibiting behavior this goes for people who are abusing drugs or abusing alcohol people that are like harming just themselves in ways like that it's like if you see oh fuck every time we go go out to a nightclub fucking sarah gets absolutely paralytic blackout drunk you know it's not illegal and she's not hurting anyone other than themselves so i tolerate it and then fucking eight months down the road she's ruined her entire life or overdosed and died you know you gotta when you see this stuff when you see warning signs you've got to have those uncomfortable conversations because that's the only way that people take a step off that path of of destruction if they've committed horrible acts it's a completely different thing but when you're seeing like these big red flags and these big warning signs you actually have a real beautiful opportunity to correct your friend's behavior and it's not just about saving this girl it's about preventing the fucking decades of harm that this dude could cause women children people in the future and it can be something as simple as like hey dude i see what you're doing and it's not cool and you're better than that and then you give them the opportunity to be better than that uh and you get to keep your friend and if and if and if they can't do it then you don't want to be friends with a fucking animal like that because they're a monster and they will only get worse trust me yeah that's my advice all right that's where we're gonna end it thank you very much for listening i hope that was uh of of value god bless president beast and uh next week is going to be a very exciting week that's all i can say it's going to be a very exciting week and uh if you see me go a little bit silent all part of the process baby trust the process all right <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. You'll see. All right, that's it. Talk to you on Patreon. Uh, the episode is up right now. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.